Um, we're really pleased to be featuring Diane Akiari's exhibition, The Further Adventures of Girl. And uh, before um, Diane tells us a bit more about that, I'll just uh, give you a bit of background on her. So um, she received her BFA from Cooper Union School of Art in 1993 and her MFA in print media from Concordia University in 2002. She's currently the associate professor, uh, associate professor and the faculty of visual art and material practice at Emily Carr University of Art and Design. Um, she recently completed public art projects for the city of Vancouver and the city of Richmond. And uh, her work has been exhibited in Canada, US, and has been included in publications such as West Coast Line, Vancouver Review, Fruit Fuse, and Front Magazine. And some of her recent exhibitions include Sugar Bombs at Canada's Art Gallery, Mendel Art Gallery, and Center MIA. MIA. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the further, further Adventures of Girl at Richmond Art Gallery, Orro, and a little distillery in Nao Gong, Center A, Ottawa City Hall Gallery. So we're very pleased to have this project here and see the ongoing evolution of Girl. And uh, I will turn it over to you now to tell us more about her. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. And I uh, just want to thank everyone for coming. Can you hear me? I know I'm not very good at projecting. I think people need to come in. You need to come into the room if you want to be able to hear. So if you could just step forward a little bit, please. Um, 
In schools, there was a lot of, kind of very militaristic activities that we did. So in sports, uh, marching was quite common as a sports activity, flag raising, something we did kind of every week. Um, we always had to learn uh, various types of revolutionary songs. And a lot of that is also kind of embedded in the history of Indonesia being a relatively new country that kind of came out of colonialism and became independent through um, a revolutionary war in the mid-40s. And kind of growing up with that context, um, but kind of moving back and forth between <coughs> Indonesia and uh, Canada and the United States, I was always struck by how coming here, what I had thought was normal was not normal anywhere else. It was like, oh, you mean you never raised the flag in school? That yeah, seems like such a kind of ordinary thing. And so I was curious about um, how uh, these sort of narratives of um, that uh, define who, how we identify as, as being from a particular place get built. And so in, in the Indonesia that I grew up in, which is very different than the Indonesia that exists now, the narrative of what was Indonesian was embedded in these sort of rituals. And, um, and that led me to become uh, really interested in kind of examining how do we define um, what groups are, kind of how we belong to certain groups, uh, whether those groups be cliques or those groups be nations uh, or maybe sports teams, and what are those sort of identifiers. And that's kind of seeped into girl in the sense of um, the idea that there's these kind of uniform bodies um, that are all exactly alike. And so one might think that they're all from a same place or a same philosophical belief or a same ideology um, or a same cult or a clique or whatever because of this kind of perceived sameness from the outside. Um, and so um, um, the, the idea of kind of who's inside and who's outside is something I'm particularly interested in. And the reason that I, there's only one character in these points is that um, I wanted to create these situations where you couldn't actually pinpoint who was within and who was without. Um, if you look at um, many of the prints, there's usually someone who's trying to escape, or I'm the one in the middle protest, everything's gone completely awry, and uh, all hell's breaking loose, so to speak. Um, and part of my interest in that is kind of examining how we as individuals are complicit in, in the societies that we live in, and how it's very easy often to say, oh, that's them and not us, and kind of trying to kind of break that up a little bit uh, in the work. Um, and um, another thing that I've been uh, very interested in, in terms of, of the work, but also in general, is um, along with uh, my interest in pop culture, is particularly how pop culture aimed at children works. And so by that I mean uh, children's books in particular, readers, um, but also even sometimes school books or educational, um, uh, educational material, and how often uh, these types of um, media present things uh, in a way that seem really innocent and safe and friendly, uh, but actually kind of contain some very uh, uh, hard-hitting kind of realities as to what is, again, what is normal, or what is kind of expected from a child or a society at that time. And so because of that, um, the way that I've worked with this series is to kind of um, very specifically adopt um, a veneer that looks really cute and to adopt a veneer that looks kind of very lush and playful. Uh, because I'm interested in how um, uh, that can make something seem innocent or innocuous in the way that, um, uh, for instance, fashion will often appropriate things from anywhere and making it look, by making it to just ornament, kind of avoids it from its original context. Um, and so uh, in this way I'm trying to kind of uh, sugarcoat what's there to then kind of seduce people in. Any particular questions <laughs> you to do that? Well, maybe, um, maybe you could just talk about um, the newer components of the series that are shown in this, so the direction of Girl as a, as a graphic novel heroine. Yeah. Um, when I first started working with um, this character, it was probably about almost 10 years ago, and um, uh, I started out um, uh, Previous to working with this, I had done a body of work um, called Guys, which was trying to uh, uh, negotiate that kind of militaristic history that Indonesia had. And in that work, um, I used a lot of photographic imagery um, and um, a lot of kind of very dark imagery. And what I realized was happening because of the photographic imagery and also the imagery of my own body, that even though it was not autobiographical, people assumed that. I was telling a personal story as opposed to a story that was about kind of the general news media um, that was kind of being recorded. 
And so I started working with a, a cartoon character, because through a cartoon character that was really simplistic, um, the relationship to me was sort of removed a little bit, and anyone could kind of project their own um, uh, position into that character. And so Girl kind of came out of that. Um, and in the initial um, uh, iterations of Girl, um, she was uh, usually a single character, and she was very specifically dealing with um, questions about war and violence, and so how war and violence are depicted in the media, in popular culture, in toys. Um, and then as I moved on, I became much more interested in kind of seeing how she negotiated the environment and environmental catastrophe, um, and um, thinking about how that um, kind of often shapes how we understand places. Um, and then from that, I became interested in um, girl being kind of multiplied into sort of um, cloning herself into a cult of personality. And so, you know, like in here, kind of having the placards and those kind of posters of girl. And so, it's like sort of this self, um, self-perpetuating machine uh, of the cult of personality. Um, and as I would do the, uh, the individual prints, I would often then start compiling bits and pieces of the prints into animated pieces. And so I've done about five or six animations uh, in this series. Um, but often in how I've been working, uh, there's a kind of implied narrative in the single shot, and even in the animations, there's not really a, a kind of linear narrative. And so I've been more interested recently <coughs> in that act of storytelling that kind of started me in the project to begin with, and kind of how to develop a story more fully. And so uh, the newest work uh, in this group are these uh, sketches over here, this piece, as well as uh, protests kind of in the middle here where I'm trying to build kind of more direct stories and more kind of linear narrative um, using the comic book format, which again is kind of an easily digestible format or seemingly easily digestible, but can often be, has often been used in propaganda, has often been used in education, um, in order to kind of create a more structured beginning, middle, end narrative. See what we have with that. And they'll be there. Uh, Deanna's coming back in September on the on the 15th for as part of our Thursday night programming. So there'll be an opportunity to see more of your animations. We just have the one here, but you'll be talking a bit more specifically about, about those pieces then. So um, just check the gallery calendar for that. So it's set, uh, September 15th, part of our Thursday night programming. Yeah. And also with uh, this animation in particular sign-off, um, what I've been playing off of uh, is um, the old TV sign-off um, montages. Um, up until very recently, when TV would kind of end at a certain time, there was always that montage, and often it would have this very kind of grandiose music, and I watched quite a few of them, from, mostly from North America, but also a few from Europe, and they always had landscape shots, or flag shots, or marching shots, it was kind of really interesting genre, um, and so this is kind of a, seeing that as, you know, again, kind of an example of um, uh, a reflection of the national identity, and kind of playing that off through the figure of girl and whatever this nation of girl might look like. Does anyone have any questions? Are you trying to make a statement about gender or politics? Because um, gender definitely is part of it. Um, and a lot of what I'm interested in, in terms of that sort of normalization of ideology, is um, how do we understand um, what we're supposed to be as women or as men? Um, how do those ideals kind of get embedded into popular culture? How do they get perpetuated? Um, what do we not see people do who is not represented? And so that's definitely a part of it. Um, and so these, these are consciously all little girls in um, kind of a very kind of uh, self-enclosed society. Um, and in terms of politics, I mean, there's certainly um, a political undertone to all the work uh, in terms of thinking of, of how, again, these ideas kind of uh, nationalism and national identity might be embedded into these very kind of simple, uh, seemingly simplistic formats like um, sports uh, exercises or Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts and those types of things. So there's, you know, there's a, a political undercurrent, but not necessarily to a specific situation. Um, McLennan tells us that the medium that you choose to express yourself, your message in, is as important, if not more so, than the message itself. I wonder if you could talk a little about how the different media that you work in, prints, sequential narratives, animation, have informed that message? Um, the prints uh, kind of come again from that history of looking at printmaking and printed matter as a tool for the dissemination of um, knowledge and the dissemination of information. And um, while we may think of etching or the thought of your little blog as these kind of archaic, ar ar artistic technologies that are actually mass media in their time. And so it seemed to make 
makes sense that in doing work about communication in this day, that I, I try and use the, the mediums that are most uh, present in communication. And so the digital prints um, kind of come out of that, with the, with the, the card print method, so to speak. Um, the animations initially came out of uh, the first iteration of Grill was a web project, and kind of seeing how um, the web kind of function is the primary source of that uh, the dissemination of information, and so the animations took place in that at, at first. Um, but this uh, very specifically refers to television, how television functions. So television is, I might say, is almost kind of dying as a as a form. If I talk to my students, most of them don't watch TV in the same way that I did. Um, so it's become kind of an archaic uh, medium that way. Um, the sequential narratives, um, kind of thinking about how um, illustrated, uh, illustrated texts and kind of sequential narrative and picture books have been used historically as a way to disseminate information, kind of thinking about, um, I remember when I was living in New York in uh, the early 90s during the AIDS crisis, there were always these uh, uh, Comment panels in the subway with Julio and Marisol that were about kind of how to uh, have safe sex and what you should do. And sort of, they would release a new panel every other week and sort of kind of get on the subway and kind of look for that. So, kind of thinking of that format. Um, and the sculptures, less so. With the sculptures, I was uh, initially thinking of, of paper dolls, um, but the, the paper doll form is kind of too small. So, this is much more of um, part of my interest is in thinking about how the idea of print can be taken to different media, media. and so the same uh, file that I use for something like this can also be used for that, so I kind of see that as an extension more of the print, as opposed to reference to sculpture necessarily. I have a quick follow-up. There's yeah. a, a huge uh, mega anime tradition in Japan and also mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is there an indigenous comics culture in Indonesia? Um, not to the same degree, like there's a Definitely a history of illustrated narrative and of storytelling through images. Um, most of the comic books that circulate in Indonesia tend to be um, either Chinese influenced with the Chinese kind of Kung Fu narratives um, uh, or Indian influenced with the kind of like Hindu Mahabharata narratives, uh, which some of those narratives also infuse into kind of Japanese culture. So, not that I know of at this date, but that's something I'm interested in. These are completed projects in the city of Vancouver and the city of Richmond. Yeah, um, in Vancouver, um, I uh, did a series of animations um, for the Vancouver 125 celebration, which is happening all year. And um, it's a series of four animations that played between March and April of this year that were 30 second animations. And they played on um, a uh, jumbotron in downtown Vancouver that usually has uh, advertising. And so I made them 30 seconds, kind of refer to the standard advertising format. And they were interspersed with ads in between. And in that one, um, it takes it, both those projects kind of divert a little bit from the main projects. So and in that one, there's still a girl, but um, what she's doing is she's walking around the city and collecting uh, monuments and souvenirs. And so mm -hmm. taking the idea of the souvenir again as a reflection of what defines a nation or a place. Um, and thinking about um, the man-made structures that become souvenirs in Vancouver, like the steam clock, Gas and Jack statue, um, what else there? There's the, the uh, um, Science World, and there's one other thing that I'm liking out on. But she basically goes to these objects and like, physically takes them and carries them home and then plays with them and imitrizes them. Um, and for the city of Richmond, um, uh, they were doing projects at um, Canada Line stations, and I submitted a proposal because one of the stations is um, Aberdeen Station, and there's a mall there called Aberdeen Mall, which um, is an incredibly Asian mall, like there's this food court that has a new station food, and when, every time I go into that mall, I feel like I'm in Jakarta, mm -hmm. and so I was really sort of, I wanted to do a project there, and so those are four images that kind of collapse the space of Richmond and Jakarta. Thank you. Did you have a yeah, I was wondering if you could talk about your creative process. Um, I consume too much media, that would be the first step. I, do. I read a lot of, um, I'm on the web all the time, I look at a lot of television, so I sort of um, look at a lot of stuff, and a lot of um, what goes into the work is a direct reflection of what I've seen. 
Um, so this, for instance, was made not long after the Beijing um, Olympics and their opening ceremony, kind of looking at the spectacle of that ceremony. Um, protest was made um, not long after um, uh, all the kind of independence movements were happening in the Middle East, and I was thinking of the relationship of that to what had happened in Indonesia um, 15 years ago, and kind of thinking about that. And so I first sort of look at all this media and can see all these images, and then um, I spent a lot of time drawing um, with pen and ink and with uh, pencil and doing lots of sketches. And then um, I will go to my computer and do little bits and pieces. So I might draw like this character and I might draw that and I might draw another action. And then after a few months of having lots of these little drawings, and I start putting them together. So it's, I, I rarely have an idea of completely what it's going to be, but more of an idea of I want to respond to this thing that I've just seen. And I'm kind of up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, it's kind of interesting that uh, you mentioned this stadium scene coming out of the Olympics because I was looking at it and wondering, uh, going back uh, a decade before that, at this whole notion of. Uh, women being objective centers in destructive ways. It's like in Stoning in Kandahar, mm. and uh, and I and I feel very so. So I find this very provocative in some other ways because I also find then the the one-dimensional um, observers. Mm -hmm. um, and here we have all of the energy in these these figures that are all innocent and young. Mm -hmm. And calls to be in certain, you know, in a certain stereotypical way. So I, I guess I just wanted to 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 to, to point out that, and also also the other one uh, of the parachutes. Mm -hmm. um, I found this this to be quite provocative in terms of either uh, you can't tell whether it's it's. Um, identity images that are coming down mm -hmm. to, you know, where are these coming from, from outer space, or, um, and, and they're usually supposed to come to us in terms of, or to, be, to, to youngsters in that position, um, in that situation as, as aid. But mm -hmm. are they? Um, well, I think and that was, that whole kind of thing, a double message. And that was partially influenced by, um, I remember reading a lot about, uh, uh, the aid that was dropped in uh, Afghanistan, yeah. and I believe, and kind of the flicks, how some of the forums were taken as comic books, and some, yeah. um, there were, I think, some uh, things that looked, like, that looked like landmines, or landmines that looked like toys, but there were sort of all these confusions to what was being mm -hmm. dropped. So that was part of um, the yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, so that was actually it grabbed immediately that sense. Uh, I guess it's just goes to say how effective <laughs> <laughs> your work is. <laughs> Thank you. And you had some other components to the series that were actual little um, figures, and there was one that was a, a little grenade or bomb. Yeah, I made them. I collaborated with a ceramicist, um, Jeremy Hatch, um, making this kind of ceramic line, but instead of the the tips being. Um, if you look at photographs of mines, it's usually these kind of protrusions and little cylinders. And in this case, the protrusions were in the shapes of um, uh, baby bottle nipples. Mm -hmm. um, you would open it up, and there's this little thing that said like bang. Well, maybe we'll just wrap up the formal talk for now. But um, Diane will be here, and there's refreshments, so there's an opportunity to ask for more questions. Um, and not throw the hot seat too much on So thank you so much, Diane, for coming. And also. Join the cult of the girls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.